two. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Lawrence DeLoach, and we are back. Uh, we got another episode of Sup Podcast. This is episode number 114. Mm -hmm. uh, really excited to be here this week. Obviously, I'm bringing the crew. Uh, we got Chris Cheney. What up? What up? And we got Luke Trovis. What's up, everybody? What's good, y'all? Um, it's Memorial Day weekend. And uh, I mean, I think I feel like we should kind of get right into it. Uh, we are in the midst of probably uh, the high point of Nike SB. The the height, the most hype it's been, and I'm gonna say, I, I can't say it's it's been maybe forever. 13 years? Is that a good maybe? 15 About, maybe? Yeah. I'm yeah. going to say I'm going to say the only things that I can the only thing I can truly say had this much hype that I can remember in terms of SBs were probably Tiff Blows. Yeah. In terms of what, you know, in terms of people going ape shit for a sneaker. Tiff Lowe's were but this is on a different level to me in terms of uh, the uh, Nike chunky gunkies uh, that are uh, coming out. Uh, they released yesterday a lot of skate shops. Uh, Tuesday, we're getting the the sneakers release. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it's it brings because I feel like of the the time frame that these are being released in because of COVID-19, uh, skate shops are already notoriously bad in terms of uh, releasing sneakers. They already have the elite attitude of, you don't come to us, you know, until there's a hype release, you don't support us. Yeah. And now they are, they're on the, you don't support us. Our stores are closed. We really haven't been making money. We're about to fucking make money. Yeah, <laughs> so much money. They're gonna make so much money. Um, have you guys? Mm -hmm. Or what do you? I mean, I know Chris, you're not the biggest fan. Have you tried any skate shot raffles so far? I mean, I will give my give it a shot Tuesday. Of course, I don't have any uh, stake in me getting them. But what I will say about the shoes is, although personally I do find them ugly, I underestimated the Ben and Jerry's name because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I had. Uh, six people who don't care about sneakers text me going like, yo, can you hook me up with getting these? Not, mm -hmm. first off, not understanding how any of this works. But, but second, just because I know people at Nike, they think that I have some sort of in. And because I'm sort of like a sneaker guy in their mind that I have access to every sneaker that's available. I mean, I wish. I wish. Yeah. If, mm -hmm. Literally, dude, they had no idea i showed them StockX just to sort of like get them to understand the ramifications and like the gravity of the situation yeah and their minds were blown because granted these were people who don't know sneakers they just like ben and jerry's literally yeah. they like like ice cream so they're <laughs> like people just like ice cream text me like hey can i get a pair like no you can't no one can actually none of us will even no. did you guys see raekwon i saw a post raekwon dm'd some skate shop back back door skate shop which is so yes. ironic. the name of the store so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, which i only brought up just to speak to your backdooring um comment and it's like yeah dude there it, this is and then the friends and family shit alone just because it comes in the fucking the pint. pint box yeah nuts yeah it's pretty crazy it's pretty nuts and i know that you're trying to kill somebody for these diors so you got to save all your connects right now I might as well get with these because the markup is way better than the fucking. I'd rather take my chances on these chunky dunks and get the that shit than to Honestly. waste all of them on the DR. Maybe. <laughs> what um what's very I mean I've I've uh you know followed a couple of skate shop raffles uh a lot of them obviously you know you don't stand a chance I want to give a special shout out to a skate shop in uh, Washington it's called New York City. Oh yes, and uh, you familiar with New York City? Yeah, I applied to. <laughs> so did you buy? Did you buy a T-shirt or? Oh, that's oh 
that's right. I had to buy something, right? Mm-hmm. I did not. I just, <laughs> put in the, I just put in the form. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, you had to purchase a, a shirt or something, or you had to, you know, purchase from them. Um, Luke, Luke always complains how he never hits any raffle, but he only reads half the shit. Yeah. Well, yeah, you had to buy. Uh, um, uh, they had they had this uh, they had a t-shirt. It was a tie dye t-shirt, which I bought. It, it was a t-shirt. I really like it, and um, and they had a live raffle last night. And you know, you saw all the name. You saw your name, and you know you, and they. And it, the thing about it is, this is what makes this like SBs or just these type of sneakers so interesting to me is the fact that. There were th- uh, at least a thousand entries for the shoe. They only the manifest from Nike. They showed the the, the manifest slip. Fifteen pairs Nike yeah. sent the store. They raffled off fourteen. The owner uh, of the shop, this dude Gabe, he kept a size ten and a half for himself. So they raffled off fourteen pairs. Right. You have thousands of people going for and, and think about it, that raffle and some of these raffles where you know they're like hey you have to buy something or you had to support the shop they're getting you know a thousand two thousand entries but then you have these free raffles that um that going that are going on where you're getting twenty thousand entries you know for for what 20 sneakers if that yeah yeah um it it it's like it's it's very like i said i mean you know a lot i mean stores are doing things that maybe they normally wouldn't do because of covid but we have to look at in terms of the sb and we 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 go into this you know i think a lot on this podcast but the three sbs this year and how they the terms of the hype, in terms of the pricing, in terms of you know everything that's going on, whether it was from Strange Loves, where they started out at a you know at, in terms of the secondary market being you know what five hundred, and then I think when COVID and you know people started getting extra money, things jumped because that's mm-hmm. a beautiful sneaker, but then you look at the Travis Scott model that yeah. came out three four weeks later after this three weeks after the strange loves and the way night there was no nike.com release there were skate shops only but the travis scott name brought so much hype to that sneaker that out the gate you were paying four figures to get uh, the sneaker if you didn't hit it on retail right these are just a completely different animal yes jesus there are a lot <clears throat> Now, obviously, the the special box ones will stay high because obviously of the box, you know, mm-hmm. the box is what, you know, it's, it's probably, you know, one of the most unique boxes that, you know, we'll, you'll see. But the the standard pair, which if you guys go to that one, if you go to the standard pair, if we're at a, if you're, say, just go to the sizes real quick, whoever's. If you're at if you're at four figures already, yeah, and you're and you're around the mid, you're at fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred. When the rest of the pairs come in from Nike, how much of a dip are these? Do you think these are really going to take? Maybe a hundred, so, two hundred bucks at most. It's so hard to say, dude, because like I said before, like I didn't anticipate the Ben and Jerry's name carrying such a strong hold in the household shit right because there's people that want this that don't care about shoes they just care about ice cream so it's a astou- it's literally astounding yeah i think they'll stay high just because like reg what do we call them like regulars i guess like regulars want the shit just because they like stuffing their face with vanilla not just vanilla or uh, like cherry garcia vanilla. isn't that the one they really sell yeah cherry garcia yeah just, mm-hmm. like so I don't think they're going down that far. I mean, it's weird to me because the Asian prices right here are sort of in the lower range compared to the other ones. If you'll notice, it's the younger, it's the younger, I'm smaller sizes for the younger kids. I think the kids, the young, young kids really want this more than anything. So it's, 
with the parents' credit card that's going to get spent. So, I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't think they're really going to be going down. Five and a half is right now over four thousand dollars, which I know this is it's not out. There's only limited, whatever. But five and a half covers kids, women, and very small men. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but also if you look at the even the bigger sizes, you see fourteen hits like a big spike too. Yeah, the bigger. Uh, yeah, obviously, but oh yeah, and then twelve and a half. That's when you look at most most skate shops are are really only receiving they received size run eight to 13. So when you start looking, when you look at those, but then when you start going to, you know, the fours, the fives, very few skate shops receive that expanded size run. And Nike obviously is going to get smaller sizes. Uh, Obviously they don't produce as many as, you know, as a a size nine or nine and a half. Um, But we're we're looking at, I mean, Nike's already gone ahead and and pretty much announced that there's going to be like 12 new dunks coming out in 2021. Yeah. Now they're not SBs, but you know a lot of them. But they're standard dunks, highs. Um. I mean, this is fucking insane right now. Like this is like the most. I mean, I've never. I, I've never. Like I said, I I remember buying my my Tiffany Lowe's off a of guy. Uh, I was in college, I, but I wasn't in, I wasn't, my skate shop in, in my college town, I wasn't there yet. I wasn't going back to school for like a week. And I remember I missed selling the drop and um, some guy sold me his Tiff Lowe's for I think like 210 bucks. This guy, this guy is, uh, he's on Nike talk. His name is 160 Jordan Deep. I'll never, like, I still message him every <laughs> now and again about him. And I remember, I remember wanting them so bad. I was going back to school. And um, and I remember not being able to get them. And box was, I think, you know, I forgot how much the box was, 90 bucks, if, if I'm correct. I still have the tag on the sneaker, but it was like 90 bucks. It was cheap. It wasn't mm-hmm. cheap, but it was. Yeah. And I remember giving, I remember I worked at the NBA store. I told a guy I'd go on lunch at like 2 o'clock. He blew up uh, the store phone looking for me. He kept calling. He was like, yo, I got to, you know, I got to make moves, blah, blah, blah. I gave him the $210. And I said to myself, God damn, Lawrence. A lot of fucking money for some dunks. And I still have the tips to this day, but when you're when a sneaker already pre-sale or pre-Nike release or you know is hitting what it's hitting for, dude, I don't know what to say anymore. I, yeah. I really, I mean, it's, this is ultimate marketing one on one. I mean, this is whether it's seeding the the, the correct people with the sneaker the hype that it had the special box that's making people go even crazier Dude, i don't know it's, man. I, it's gonna i think um influence nike and its co-branded projects in the future to try to use more household names yeah uh sort think of an in-between or not an in-between just like a like the Supreme MTA card is sort of a similar execution as far as like name recognition and use. Uh, yeah. It was just too Metro central. Like it was too New York city for it to really appeal to the middle America household, like mom or daughter or son, whatever, whatever. Uh, if they keep taking names like Ben and Jerry's that are known very well known outside of the sneaker world and incorporate that back in and then tell the nice stories that like this one with the box and shit, it's going to be crazy for the next couple of years. Uh, if they do them right and, and limit the amount. I want Reynolds rap air force ones. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, that's a ridiculous one, but like, that's not even that crazy. Listen, they've been stealing our ideas from day one. <laughs> We're going to get Reynolds rap air force ones. I'm telling you. <laughs> And you guys are gonna you're gonna be like, oh no way, Luke, no way. We'll and all back clear to Air Max. What? That's well, basically clear- what that is. I mean, run- or I guess a, the metallic because that's the foil, they do the right? aluminum foil, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So that's like a, aluminum- that's just a metallic. Nike should hire us. <laughs> they should. <laughs> <laughs> they should not. This they is a dumb conversation. But I mean, I, I mean, L to your point, I kind of think that's the the direction they're gonna go in. Um. They don't, it's, this industry now is so commercial. 
uh, if you keep incorporating more commercial names, because they even had that 7-Eleven dunk that got canceled. Did you see that? Right. Yeah, it, it, but it didn't receive a favorable response. It, it's, yeah. Ben and Jerry's, rece- I mean, certain people obviously are like, they didn't like the the execution. They thought it was too too much. But for the majority, that was a well-received sneaker when the first images came out. I know, Chris, you weren't a big fan of it, but the yeah. 7-Elevens, people did not, did not enjoy at all. So that, people, I guess, can be an example of, like, the, the name recognition backfiring. And this is a great example of it, like, working too well. Well, the thing with 7-Eleven is their color palette is already kind of gross. So yes, that's also a thing. Nothing, go, like, working for them. At least with these, it's a very vibrant colorway. Mm-hmm. So it'll always catch an eye, while the 7-Eleven's ones look like vomit. But it just goes to that household name thing. So, like, I think when I saw the 7-Elevens at first, I saw a lot of interest, at least via my timelines. Really? Um, and of course, it, it dissipated, didn't go anywhere. The Ben and Jerry's skyrocketed, um, I think, due to the demand of kids wanting them. But I think they're really trying to experiment with household names. Just names that everyone knows, because like, nickname something Strange Love. Uh, it will be, you know, it will click because we care. Right. But they want people to click that don't care. It's true. These nickname well, shoes aren't going to get very far. They want to see another logo attached to these household names i'm saying well i mean you got i mean you look at certain uh for example like uh heineken's mm-hmm. the heineken, heineken dunks are a classic yeah um i'm trying to think you know what else, what else has been like with a brand that you know the way the way these are in terms of sbs i mean what else mm-hmm. has been Ooh, what other put me on this. Damn. no i'm just saying i'm like i'm just trying to figure this out i mean you know like Heineken's are the first th- ones that come to my my mind in terms yeah. of the the brand, like and, and remember Heineken's weren't like remember that wasn't even like an official. Yeah, they pulled them back. Coll- yeah. Collab. That's what I'm saying. This is an actual Nike Ben and Jerry, and I think and we've also we've discussed this in the past in terms of what makes a sneaker, what makes a shoe. Uh, a, a classic, and it, it, I've always said it. When when non people who are into the sneaker yeah. culture or come looking for that particular shoe, when exactly. they're like, "Oh shit!" And I, and I said, I said, you know, Sakai's were a sneaker last year that people were like, "Oh shit!" Like you know, it it, it brought other sneaker people into the realm, and these sneakers are are the exact same thing where it's bringing, yeah. like you said, Chris, that people that weren't even and they they're not even excited about the brand or the, you know nike or you know they're not big time sneaker people but they're fucking looking for these shoes yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> i think that's what will keep uh i think these are i mean honestly i just i don't see these going for even when when pairs come in unless nike legitimately has thousands of these i don't see the price is dipping too much. No. I don't see a small dip. The yeah. first, like, probably two weeks, I don't think they'll really budge. Uh, I think maybe people, like, seeing the price, trying to save up. I mean, also, who knows? It's so hard, hard to figure out what the fuck is going to happen well, with these no. spikes. First thing that will happen is it'll dip very small, maybe 10% at most, because you have your your guys who got to get rid of it right away, right? Right, of course, yep. The guys who don't have the money, they just need to get rid of those shoes. They got to dip a little up. bit, and then obviously over time, like it'll just after that first dip, it's just gonna keep going up. I think that's what probably what will happen. Well, I mean, what's interesting to me is if uh, if and 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 this is another thing too that helps. I think resellers or people in general, the fact that the the release was staggered in terms of the skate shops doing mm-hmm. it on the twenty third. And then Nike doing it on the 26th because if you if you had everything released on the 23rd, then you know there there could be like some wins. It, it, I mean, there could be like low ball offers. You know, people right. are like, all right, and and I, most people aren't gonna like let go of a hundred dollar sneaker. There are some people who have to let go of you know whatever for financial reasons. They see you know clip. They have to that I understand, mm-hmm. but I feel like what happens now is you have the 
the skate shops, they release super limited quantities. Like I said, I mean, the raffle I saw for New York City, I mean, you're talking 14 pairs and there's over a thousand entries. You're talking most skate shops are getting a size or two size runs. And then, you know, once their people get taken care of, how many sneakers are truly being, you know, offered to the public. But right. what happens is that causes the price to go up because it's like, it's limited. It's like, oh shit. You know, and then when Nike drops, maybe it takes it, it because it's already gone up. Now it may dip down to some quote unquote normalcy, but it's still going to be fucking mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. I'm looking so, at a list on my end of like the hundred or like 50, 50 like most influential SBs of all time. And I'm trying to find any brand names that I could pull and Heineken's the only one. Other than that, it's like, yeah, Supreme Concepts. There's the Uncle Dong's De La Souls. There's like some stuff that we know, like Huff, Tie Dyes. Mm -hmm. But there's no like, there's no other corporation attached to these that like anyone else would really know or care about. Like, if I say Comedy Garcons to my mom, she's going to say, uh, bless you and think I sneezed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, that's what makes, I think it's going to make these. I honestly, I mean, it's our, and I hate to say it, but you know, I hate to use that. This is a two thousand dollars shoe, but it's a two thousand dollars shoe, right? It, and it's not, you know, and and granted, it may be quicker than you you thought. Like, I mean, you know, sometimes you all you were wrong about certain sneakers or certain in terms of what it goes for in the secondary market. Like, I remember, you know, when when off white when the the off white Jordan one Chicago's came out, you know, people were like, well, by the time you know when. When people got pairs in hand, it you know it it dipped down to around fifteen hundred, twelve hundred, and people were like, "All right." And then all of a sudden, the market dried up so much that you know it, it was it then became a four thousand dollars shoe, yeah, like that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I you know like I said, I, I I do really, I hate to say it, but I, I can see this shoe easily being one of the most expensive pairs ever to touch the secondary market when things are setting down the next like year or so um, I can see that for sure an interesting comparison to this because it's such a household name and a lot of eyes are getting on it i think a lot of people are seeing um the potential resale money that it kind of reminds me when bitcoin became a household name um right. now if you look at sneakers sort of as a currency the same way that bitcoin is looked at as a currency the bubble started to pop when it got to like that 20k mark and had to go down is when mm -hmm. household names realized how much money you could make from bitcoin mm -hmm. so because me explaining but i'll use my sister as an example because my sister was one of the first people to hit me up and ask um and because her being my sister she knows like my history with sneakers she knows whatever but to still to text me and go like Hey, let me get these. I'm like, Kath, what's wrong? You, no fucking way. And then for me to show her stockings, go, wait, you can make that much money off selling sneakers. I'm like, this is my, this is what my life has been. You know what I mean? Like, this <laughs> yeah. is what I've been paying attention to. And for yeah. her to go, oh, so what, what can we do to get a pair so then we can, then she's trying to scheme with me. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, 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 you're falling for the trap. Yeah, no, 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 no. It just, when that happened, it sort of reminded me of that Bitcoin trigger because uh, a lot of people started chasing the money the same way my sister started to look at it. So I want to pay attention to how people look at some of these SBs going forward. Now, the ones that, Lawrence, you mentioned earlier, how there's going to be like a whole year rollout. Those are just colorways. Those aren't anything crazy. Those have no mm -hmm. collabs to them. That's just going to be SB hype. There's I, gonna, well, there's a lot of, yeah, well, a lot of them are just standard dunks. They're not. Yeah, yeah a lot so. of them. Do, nothing crazy about them. Just regular dunks, um, riding off this this silhouette similarity hype. Yeah. Uh, it's it's. I just want to pay attention moving forward how people move when it comes to these co-branded projects, especially ones with this much attention and this much story attached. Because if I get people like my uncle hit me going like, uh, "What about the color shoes? Can we sell?" Then I don't. I might have to just leave. Just stop you doing just this. Have to quit. <laughs> quit sneakers all the all together. So I'll just, I'll go back to just designing them. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, last yeah. thing I want to ask you guys um, about this shoe before I feel like we. Uh, if you a lot of times you know, especially in sports, like you're like, all right, could this dude play in, in this era? You know, if you take LeBron out of this era, could you put him in the '80s? You know, or, or '90s? If you took the Ben and Jerry SBs 
out of 2020 and you put them in the 2004, 2005, would they still have, would they have this much hype? Would it, you know? I don't know, man. I think I like Cheney's shaking his head. No, but I'm, I think maybe. And the only reason why is because I think the, the swoosh, first of all, the swoosh cut, like the drip Mm -hmm. on the swoosh, is like a little bit that's like kind of feels like a fun fun little homage to uh ben and jerry's and i think that was Mm -hmm. like kind of unique for that era just playing around with the swoosh a little bit more Mm -hmm. uh i also think prints were very popular back in like the the early 2000s as far as sbs like i'll tell you again those the three bears met uh the three bears uh collab those are all furs uh what else do we have that's like all those like uh I get what you're saying, Luke. It's, yeah. it's, I think it will just be one of those more revered uh, colorways that we had back in the day. I mean, because, like, this space has so much attention on it now. Mm-hmm. There's more eyes on it now. There's more need for it now. I think it's just a product of great execution, timing, and um, luck, honestly. Yeah. It's, I think it's all those part things. of it. I mean, back in the day, we would, we would have all liked – people don't – realize that this sort of story execution and this much attention to detail all happens 15 years ago right there, we, no one else just fucking care yeah well, so many, was... like well no go mm-hmm. you guys go no no go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. no i was gonna say i have so many like weird exclusive like boxes at my mom's house that mm-hmm. no one knows about you know what i mean it's a great story told great like whatever that we look at today and like damn that was just, that was just a great that was a that was a good one i like that one but now it's sort of just like, a, like I said, it's a combination of all those things coming to a head. Yeah. I don't think they would have done as well back then, but they, we sure would look at them going like, damn, that was a good, that was, they did that, that one right. Yeah, Similar I don't, I don't think what they, we do now. I don't think they'd be four, like four figures, but I do think they would be like, you'd see kind of like the same prices as Uncle Dunks or not Tiffany's. Yeah, probably Tiffany's around that well, same time, the 800 well, kind of well, five, five to 800 well, range. I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, like I said, when Tiffany's came out, I mean, we're talking 20, 2005, you're looking at, I mean, $250 for that shoot. $300 was a lot. Right. It, it wasn't, you know, so I mean, even so in there, and even when Uncles, like Uncle Dunks came out the year prior. Right. And, and I, you know, I, I always say, I mean, I, I was able to walk into a skate shop mm-hmm. and the owner of this skate shop he tells me this is 2004. He this said, I call him. Right? I call, $3,000 sneaker now. 16 years ago, I walk into the store. I say, Hey, uh, you still have uncles, right? He says, Yes. I said, uh, how, how many do you have? He says, I got a full size room. He says, No one wants these shits. I said, <laughs> I would gladly take a 12, my size. And I said, I'll give me an 11, right? I, my boy who drives me to the skate shop, the skate shop's called Prudco Skates in Rochester, New York. He drives me to the skate shop. I say, do you want, are you going to get a pair of these? He says, I don't want those ugly shits. I'm, <laughs> I'm not wearing pink. I say, fuck it. I'm wearing pink. I want those. The skate shop owner said, do you want three more? Because you can have them. <laughs> and, I did not at the time because I was a, a broke college student. I could they, I paid one hundred and thirty dollars for each sneaker. I paid two sixty. My my ex girlfriend at the time she said, "You're stupid for buying a second pair. Who's gonna buy those sneakers?" That's what she said. She said, "You oh. you don't you're wasting your money." But I bought. I said, "I believe that these are going to because in my you know me in my history of knowing sneakers and knowing." shoes i said someone will buy these shoes so at the time i ended up because i needed the money i sold the 11 for 300 dollars to which ended up turning out to be a kid i went to high school with wow and now that 11 could have been sold for nine or two thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars there you go there you go so I would look at the time was $130 on my end. I was like, this shit, I said, God damn. Like, you know, it was like buying a pair of fucking Jordans. It was cheaper than buying a pair of phone posits. I was like, you can't go wrong mm-hmm. with a shoe like this. You know what I'm also, saying? But it, 
Mm-hmm. The other the other thing about these this dunk craze too is that they haven't really like up to the price as they have the other models. So like, I mean, I couldn't tell you exactly what the average Jordan went, but we all know dunks and SBs and were pretty much usually two digits. Like you could get them for like ninety, hundred bucks or whatever. Yeah, so like these bucks. chunky dunks being a hundred bucks, uh, with some easy math, they're, you could sell them for fifteen times their retail. Mm-hmm. Uh, with that value also being seen by consumers too, I think that yeah, like I mean, just to tie this all in a little knot, like this is. They're really just trying to, trying to capitalize on this craze wave that came out of nowhere. I think well, the, uh, they, they, they kind of did increase the, the, uh, the price. Remember, because this uncle, when it originally came out, the suggested retail was 70 bucks. Yeah, 70. So, 70. I mean, so when you say $70 in a skate shop is charging you double the price, you know, um, it, it's still it's it's a markup, but I think that's that's the thing that SB like skate shops have that they're able to not really play by the rules in a sense. Yes, they do have to sell, and yes, they can up the prices on sneakers. But for the most part, it, it's the wild wild west when it comes to you know when it yeah. comes to skateboarding shops in terms of what they do with their pairs. So, so I was just trying to find the retail of the Tiffany's. It doesn't say here, and I just tried to look at another one quickly. Yeah, I mean, the I, the upsell on these, though, is like inflation, and not like in a bad way, though. That's kind of like my point. It's like mm-hmm. the 70 to 100 is not crazy compared to like the other upsell, like up marks yeah. that they've had. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, that this in general is just befuddling, really. <laughs> I think the uh, the Dunks colorways that are coming out is like a nice, I think that's like a nice gesture to the sneaker community. It's like here, here's some kind of generic colorways so that some of you could actually get a pair of Dunk Lows. Yeah, but yeah. Still, you're, still, you're still not going to be able to get anything because look at the way, the, the, the hype that Dunks have right now. You look at the fucking Brazils the that Brazil, came out. Yeah, the Brazils sold out almost immediately too. There you go, so... Mm-hmm. I think going into next year, though, with the amount of quantities, I think we'll all be okay for the most part. Like, uh, yeah, if you I want just, a pair. I think the idea is just saturate the market. You may not get the exact colorway that you want, but you'll you'll probably be able to land on something. You know. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't like this. It makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me sad. I want like you know. I want all those old SB. I remember when I was looking in Flight Club when I was like 17 years old. Uh, at the Uncle Dunks, and they were like 800 bucks. So mm-hmm. seeing them at three grand now just makes me very sad. So after last week's episode, uh, former guest and friend of the show, Jesse Villanueva, yes. been on a couple times. Um, just to, I can, I can kind of segue from what we're talking about here in just, just this point. Mm-hmm. Him and I were just having kind of a back and forth, realizing we're old heads and complaining or whatever. Um, Because he didn't like the way we titled the last episode. He was like, how could you guys even, like, put these two up against each other? I don't want to say which one he preferred, but I think it should be pretty obvious. Yeah. Um, And then throughout that, we kind of realized that it's so hard for us to see things like this happen because, like, Lawrence, like you brought up originally, like, with the exclusivity of the backdooring and all that stuff. At least, this is what I'll say to that, is that I don't think people did that out of, um, out of, like, uh, out of, like, negativity. They didn't do it to, like, slight people. No. Ba- I mean, back when, because no one cared about skate culture when it first, like, started to boom in the 90s, you know what I mean? Like, that mm-hmm. idea came from, I was at that shop already every day. Yeah. They already had a pair for me, whether I asked for it or not. Yeah. So when we see stuff like this and it gets annoying, it's just because these kids don't understand like the legacy of where this stuff kind of comes from. And it's hard for them to learn and explain that because they weren't alive for it to when it, when it happened. Yeah. The only way these kids learn about stuff like this is from platforms like ours or an OG figure kind of explaining it. But mm-hmm. when they always, when they only learn from stuff on Instagram, that's how we get this weird, $4,000 shoe and an ice cream pint. Yeah. 
-hmm. Right? Does that make sense? Makes total sense. Yeah, it's uh, because now it becomes like, for us, it was like a physical thing. Like everything was very physical. We would go to the store, we'd see the pair, like you'd have to like, if you weren't up to date on sneaker knowledge, you'd have to like, walk into the store and be like, what do you got this week? And they'd have something, you know, they'd always have something. Uh, yeah. Nowadays, it's just, it's just, yeah, there was a like, you tell these kids, like, there was a time when you could get these shoes right off the shelf a week later, and there would be no issue. Like, it's, it's all legends to them. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I think that that's what adds to the hype, too. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, man. Now I'll never get a pair of Uncle Dunks. <laughs> yeah, those are, you know, I don't know. Those are, I don't know. It's just, uh, <laughs> I, I just I just look back on that era and I, and and the things that like that I purchased like you know uncles and like Mork and Mendy's you know mm -hmm. and and uh, and the Gibson as be like that like you know that five six year era that like I was just buying like you know uh, MF Dooms yeah. like and that ended up giving away MF Dooms and and fucking uh, I gave away Mork and Mendy's but you look back on that and you're like things were. You know, and I don't want to, I never want to sound like that old dude who's just like, in my days, you know, sneakers were. You're already and, that guy. Yeah, too late, dude. <laughs> no way. Like, what do you, we can, do you want to just play back here? Audience, play back this recording <laughs> 15 minutes and then show it to Lawrence. I don't want to be that old. Dude, you are. I don't, I don't want, but no, I don't want to be the, the, the angry at the the culture for how it is now i, I okay. you know I, like i i yeah, he doesn't want to be like, me no i don't want to be like what the fuck man when i can when you can walk into a skate shop and buy heat like no i don't want to be that <laughs> guy but at the same time like you know it's uh it's it's frustrating when you like something and it's like oh he, well you got to fill out these eight thousand raffles and you know and then you, there's a million other raffle entries in there like you're like shit you know, yeah. it's almost like I remember. I'd rather just stand on the fucking line, and you know. But um, we're we're in a different time frame now. I know. Like, imagine if the Iron Man dunks came out now. Yeah, because of all the hype, Spider Man See, in, dunks. Yeah, any it's like any of those because those. I first no one gave a fuck about Iron Man until Robert Downey Jr. Literally, yep. he was like one of the most disregarded superheroes. That's ever. a fact. The most now, interesting thing about him was that he was an alcoholic. That is a fact. He was supposed to be DC's answer to Batman being the powerless superhero guy, right? And everyone's like, dude, yeah. fuck, Batman's so sick. Iron Man, the fuck out of here. Now he's a household name. So imagine, so if we, similar to like what you were talking about, like, yo, if the Chunky Ducks came out back then, imagine those coming out now. Mm -hmm. Right. Even just at the, at the shoe the way it is, mm -hmm. it'd be fucking bananas just because the household name, just back to the formula we were talking about. Right. We're all gonna end up being the old guy just because we are. That's old. that's what we. That's what, I mean. You guys more so than me, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm still uh, young. I'm still hip. I got my Patrick Ewings. I'm I'm a hip guy. <laughs> <laughs> also, shout out to Patrick. Hopefully, he gets over COVID. Yeah, hopefully. Yes. Uh, uh, go now here's. I was gonna. I was gonna actually talk about the next uh, topic. <clears throat> I mean, so after everyone takes their L's on Tuesday. <laughs> then uh, Saturday, uh, more L's will be taken with Travis Scott uh, 720s. Yeah. Seven, two, 270s. 270s. 270s? Yes. 270s. Uh, he had a – a, a, I mean, Travis is – he – what they're good at in terms of what he's doing with Nike, once again, the marketing. He got retired wrestling legend Mick Foley, also known as Cactus Jack, to yeah. – uh, to uh, be part of the campaign here, we, we've seen him do it with, with NFL legend Randy Moss. Like we've seen, like yeah, uh, internet the, internet sensation Brad Hall. Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. don't, oh yeah, that was which great. we've never really talked about that web series, but uh, maybe for another time. But continue, yeah, definitely. <laughs> what um. What what about these sneakers are you looking forward to the most to take the loss on? Like, tell me about what are you guys? Uh, dude, I did not I I did not even look like blink an eye when it came, when these shoes were coming out. But when they announced mm -hmm. that you could spray paint a backward swoosh on them, I was like, oh, that's kind of fun. 
I'm kind of game for that. Also, I hate that they marketed it that way. That is just an upside down stencil. Right. Mm-hmm. They they marketed it, that stencil as an up, that, upside down swoosh where it's it's just a swoosh. You went like this. It's free. That's how stencils work. That's the Nike logo. It's free. <clears throat> it is free. So it's like um, I'm not gonna hate on them too much. I might go for the cargo pants, honestly. I think they, like I'll have a no, better shot with that than getting the actual shoes. And the cargo pants are goofy enough where if I wore them on the like I could see myself wearing them out in New York City. You know? Oh totally. So, I actually like the cargo pants. I do. So we have up on the screen here um, the website attached to all the accessories and shit that goes with these shoes. Um, very uh, ancient aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Um, very Oregon Trail, I guess. I think yes. Luke, you described it as that. I think yeah. Oregon um, Trail will be the best way, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this, similarly to the Chunky Dunks, uh, have an overwhelmingly great story attached to them with an ugly shoe. Right. I mean, yeah, I, do you guys like this shoe? I'm because I told you guys I've I've always hated the buy an old looking sneaker new. Uh, yes, you have said that. You have been on record. I mm-hmm. don't hate them. I am more um, indifferent to them. Like if somebody has a pair of them and I I'll point them out to them and be like, oh cool, you cop those. But like yeah. as far as like, am I like, am I gonna am I going gonna go crazy? Like, oh, I can't believe you have no. I'm gonna be like that. That's cool good for you you know if you guys want to buy pre-worn socks um, yeah i thought that i thought that was hilarious you, you, i don't think you can you can't purchase those those are uh if you click on it you cannot purchase those are not for sale oh warning this is not a real product yeah you can't wear oh can't, uh, i see i didn't click i'm talking shit even though i didn't click on shit that's all right that's a good bit i like that no that a lot of a, this a lot is of all this, bits yeah, a lot of it is bits. Like a lot of it, you cannot purchase. But you know, some of it, you uh, it's obviously it's designed for the sneakers. Mm-hmm. Um, in my heart, I honestly feel like uh, if I if I somehow get these, I wouldn't want to keep them. Uh, I yeah. would definitely flip them, especially in the um, especially the time that we're in now, where it seems like people got motherfucking money to burn. Mm-hmm. And I think that yeah. is you know that will keep the sneaker granted you know it's not obviously the best travis scott nike sneaker that to me is obviously the the high top one Mm -hmm. but it's not the worst it's not like the 33 or whatever 33s were trash it's somewhere to me in the middle i agree yeah the the fleece on the on the side uh that little stretch of fleece was kind of nice i did like that touch that was the only thing Mm -hmm. that i really liked out of anything on the shoe yeah, they're already going for a grand right now. Uh, kids, if you get a pair and you don't like them, try to trade for a pair of Ben and Jerry's. That's what you should do. Oh, uh, you would. You would probably need two Travis Scotts to uh, acquire one Ben and Jerry. All right, a discounted price on your Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> there you go. You yeah. would definitely. You're gonna need two. I think. I think these settle or these get to if they're at a thousand now. By the time all the stores get them, I think you're looking at probably uh, a, a five to six hundred. I'm gonna say a five to six hundred dollar shoe. Okay. Um. And I, I'm going to say like, oh, yeah, and because it's a, it's a good amount of stores getting them. And I think they're not going, they're not like Travis Scott's best collab with mm-hmm. Nike, but they're definitely up there. They're going to, you know, you're still going to make some money off of them if you try to. Yeah, they'll, they'll move. And I, you know what I will say? I love that they added the uh, please fuck these up element to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I like when they, because, you know, usually the custom shit's like uh, you can be on either side of it, but when. The company tells you, like, hey, have some fun with these. I, I do like that. So that's yeah. cool. There's a couple things I like about them, but, like, the colorway itself just doesn't really blow me away. No, I, I think it literally me. looks like you, like, are trying to clean peanut butter off it. Mm-hmm. I don't mind. I don't mind the, uh, I don't mind it, per se, but I just don't like the, I'm not, like, the biggest silhouette fan of, of, of the shoe. I'm not a 270 guy. Yeah. yeah man. Mm-hmm. Still another hype one. It checks all the boxes. Checks all the boxes. Oh, totally. And, and, and people are going to be – that's the thing. People are – like, you, you almost don't have time to react to the to the loss you're going to take for the, the chunky dunks. 
because yeah. it's, like, oh, on to this I, it's like oh shit wait it's tuesday and and fucking th- two days later like when you know or or what, tuesday or wednesday when the raffles open up you're like all right fuck it let's let's get back into these raffles so i can you know try to lose some more money so uh, uh last dance yeah we gotta we yeah. gotta end our review fucking what do we what do we think guys um i will Winners put myself losers. out I will put myself out on the ledge and say, although the entire doc is astounding, crazy, those last two episodes, I was sort of disappointed because uh, they didn't have the impact the last couple weeks had. Um, and I know they were just tying some bows and like putting the cherry on top and I get it. But I, uh, I, was un- I felt underwhelmed with the two episodes after I watched them. But generally speaking, I was overwhelmed from the whole thing. So it's sort of that give and take. But no, that shit was... That's going to be the one of the greatest docs of all time. It's a docu series. Sure. Uh, I thought the Pacers. St- I would have wanted to see more on the Pacers and the Jazz. I feel like that. Like you could have talked more about Carl Malone and John Stockton a little bit. Um, and Reg- the Reggie Miller stuff was pretty fun too. Um, what else? I I don't know. Yeah, overall, pretty much same thing. I felt a little underwhelmed by the last two episodes. I, th- I thought it was interesting that Scotty said, like, is mad about it. Scotty yeah. doesn't like the way he was portrayed, even though the f- the second episode was basically dedicated to him. Right. But um, they, made him, and- they, they made him out to look like kind of a bitch. Because he was. With the mic, my- yeah. Okay. Well, wait, Lawrence, what, what are your thoughts on the last two apps? Um, I think, obviously, I, I definitely can agree with you guys to, to, like, to a certain extent. Like, I, I do feel like it was very um, – it, it, it lacked the the depth of the first eight episodes. Like the first eight yeah. episodes were, but in a sense, they had to kind of like recap the games, if that right. makes sense. Like it, it had to, you know, you went from the Pacers series to the two Jazz series, and you know, the Steve Kerr stuff was amazing about his dad. You know, and I, you know, I, I knew a little bit about his father being uh, murdered. Uh, you know, obviously, but um you know, to hear him speak about it was, you know, it was very emotional. And I think just to see Michael, you know, the the way he went out as a bull was awesome. Um, I didn't like the ending per se, because it, it definitely felt like, but it, it, I feel like if you had even 15 episodes of that shit, you would still be like, well, fuck, I mean, I want more. Like, yeah. there's no 10 episodes for for to cover basically you know, 14 years, because that's pretty much what they did from 84 to 98. And they did it in 10 episodes. And they still had the, the you know, uh, to to give Robin his episode and Pip. It, it's just so much stuff that they could have gotten into that they, they, you know, I'm sh- you know what, honestly, I think would be a fucking moneymaker if they had the, the director's cut or whatever, where, where you get all the shit that was left on the cutting room floor, because... Yeah. I'm sure that shit is probably just as great as the the actual doc. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And like those Jordan reactions of him watching everybody else talk shit. <laughs> like if there's any more of those, I want all those. Yeah. Um I, I think I oh. text you guys like immediate oh what what? I'm sorry. Oh what I was gonna also say real quick about Pippin was granted, you know, they 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 said that, you know, Pippin felt like he was he came he was portrayed in a negative light. All of those things that Pippen, you know, did were 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 known. It was yeah. known he didn't he 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 wanted a bigger contract. I mean, there was there's a, there's an actual video of Scottie Pippen, and I, I you know I, I I I've seen this a billion times. It's from the 1995 All Star Game, and I think it's Craig Sager, rest in peace, who's interviewing him. And he's asking Scottie, he's like, hey, you know, uh, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think they're going to trade you? Do you want to be traded? This is All Star Weekend. Scotty Pippen's in, being interviewed by Craig Sager. If you pull it up, it's it's there. He basically says, "Yeah, I want to be traded. I don't want. I think my time in Chicago is done. This is right before All Star break. This is before Jordan comes back in '95. Mm-hmm. If they play that video, I think then Pippen legitimately has a y'all, fuck y'all, y'all. But the sitting out with Ku Coach with the two point, you know, the the two the two seconds or one second or whatever it was left in that game when they were down 0-2 to the Knicks." The fucking, you know, the the all the the migraine against Detroit. This is stuff everyone knew. Yeah, I think the last episode when Scotty's back was fucked up and he couldn't play really Game Six against Utah. 
they made him look like he was a fucking warrior. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, you know, I didn't like how Mike said Scotty was a little selfish, but I also feel like, you know, I that some of that is definitely for the drama. Yeah. But uh, you know, listen, you know, and it's a Jordan. It was a Jordan Doc. Yeah. He he had final say so in all the shit. Yeah. So. I'm surprised that some of the other guys, like Isaiah Thomas, do you think that anyone looks at Isaiah Thomas as a great guy now? Like, he didn't say shit. Yeah. Or if he mm-hmm. said it, it didn't make headlines. We A lot of people, like, people who, I mean, obviously, if, you, if you're if you really, like, hardcore, you know the game of basketball, like the, and, like, the stuff that goes on, you know about the Isaiah stuff. To the casual fan who may not really – you Isaiah comes off as really like some like from the dream team to the bad boys to you know there was the the I don't know if they I don't even remember if they did this in the doc but you know Dennis Rodman was like you know Larry Bird was another back if he was a black player he'd be just another uh basketball player he'd be like another black guy you know they were saying like Larry Bird like was Larry Bird because he was a white guy and Isaiah doubled down on it and he was like yeah you know they came to him and they was like yo Rodman said this and Isaiah was like yeah and and that was huge, you know, in 1987 when, you know, they had them to sit down in the press conference together. Like, shit like that, you know, that I don't think the doc really went into, obviously, because it's not an Isaiah doc. But come on, man, they could have made some of these guys look worse than they were. Yeah. It made me appreciate that era of basketball way more because you're just like, okay, Jordan got six rings out of this. And mm-hmm. also some of the greatest basketball players were also playing at the same time, you know, like mm-hmm. leagues like ahead where it was like every team had a, like a very solid lineup and everybody was like a contender. And it was very I fun. just wish my biggest takeaway out of that stuff was learning about, I just did, don't wish that it was Steve Kerr's dad that I was most interested in at the last two episodes. It's true. I didn't know about the Steve Kerr shit, and it kind of hit me the same way some of the the Rodman and the Pippen stuff did. And that's why I was kind of like, wait, why am I, like, thinking about Steve Kerr at the last two episodes of this doc? Well, the reason why the the Steve Kerr stuff came in the final couple episodes was because he hit the shot against Utah game six. Of course, and it had the dad relatability and stuff. So, yeah, so, I mean, you know, you kind of, like, talk about Kerr in a sense, like, you know, just like how they talked about Paxton and yeah. the, the 93 when he hit the shot, you know, it was. Yeah, true. But the Kerr, the Kerr stuff is obviously it was there because, A, he's still very relevant in the NBA. He coached, you know, some of the greatest, you know, teams to play, the Golden State Warriors, and he had a lot of success. He has a lot of success as a coach. So, yeah, I mean, you know, Kerr, even in the time he was a bull, he was a role player, but he, as time went on, he, you know, like I said, he coached a team that won more games than the actual set, the Chicago team that won 72 games. The Warriors won yeah. 73. Yeah. So they didn't win the championship, but, you know, so Kerr has, you know, so, I mean, and the story about his dad, I mean, fuck, it was, you know, it was, it was I mean, it's like wild. I said, I, it's wild. Mm-hmm. So. Um. What a doc, though. They, they're they talking about making a Tom Brady one now because they saw this get hyped. They're talking about the Kobe one that apparently mm-hmm. was uh, in the at least being at the beginning of the works. Uh, they're talking about everyone wants a doc now. There's this- the Quibi <laughs> one. The Quibi one with the Clippers looks good. The 2021 oh, yeah, docuseries in sports is just going to be bananas because anyone that even considered a GOAT at one point is probably going to get one. Sure. Yeah. yeah, there's already – yeah, there's been a crew following Tom Brady around for forever. So mm-hmm. I know I know there's one in the works for him. Uh, I Yeah, I, I can't wait to see the Kobe one. That's what I want. I want the Kobe one now. The Kobe uh, one, as great as it will be, I think the fact that he's not there to talk will fucking yeah. hurt. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That one's, that one's really – Well, that no, I heard yeah. – they already like there was a team dedicated to recording them during that time. I think that's it's already done. Like it, apparently it's already done. Nah, but I'm him not even being around for like the oh. release and like he the, there's oh, no yeah, follow yeah. up. You you can't like yeah. We could someone can still go talk to MJ. You that's know what true. I mean? Mm-hmm. No, you can't. No one's gonna be able like no no one's gonna be like Kobe. Uh, quick question about this one part of that. You know? Yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, man. Also, rest in peace, Jerry Sloan, uh, the coach of the Utah right. Jazz. He passed away this week. Uh, so, you know. Yeah, rest in peace. <laughs> One of the funniest post-game interviews in that entire documentary series when he looks at the scorecard and goes, this is the final score? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, no. I did laugh out loud at that That point. was that so was very That funny. was fun. And was you like, know what? Kerr's speech when he was just like, you know, I was just – had to do it. Mike's not comfortable in these situations. Of course, yeah. he gave it to me. Yeah. Like, that was also mm-hmm. great. That was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was so funny. This was the score? This was, this was, this, this was it? This is the score. I'm like, that guy's I dead? Mean, that guy? The fun yeah. guy? Damn, that sucks. And you know, and you know Jerry Sloan, he, uh, he's an ex-Chicago Bull. He was like one of the greatest Chicago Bulls, to, uh, which that was kind of like, all right, you, I didn't really talk about that in a dot, yeah. but you know, he – He's like, you know, he was a legend for the Bulls, in, you know, in the 70s. Uh, Jerry coached all the way up to when Gordon Hayward was on the the Jazz, so. Yes, uh, him, yeah, and, you know, and unfortunately his time with the Jazz ended uh, slow because of uh, players. He clashed, uh, well, Darren Williams at the time, you know, he, you know, being a diva kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, got Jerry Sloan ousted, but I mean, fuck, Sloan was coaching the Jazz for twenty plus years. You know, yeah, yeah, He's up um, there. That's crazy. I think uh, um, we're kind of at the point where we can wrap this one up, boys. Do you want to before we go? Do you want to talk about that Doja Cat thing real quick? Sure. Yeah, if you want to, um, I do want to quickly shout out. Now that we're bouncing off uh, the idea of coaches, you brought up the coach. Um, Sean Payton, that's right. The yeah, first coach was signed to Jordan. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, good for him. Good for great. Uh, uh, it gets me a little worried. Uh, what are you going to start signing assistant coaches, and then uh, why the ball boy is going to get a shoe? Fine, that's cool. Um, no, but good for him though. Uh, Sean Payton is not of, getting a shoe. He's getting visors. Getting that's shoe. what he's getting. You guys he's know what I'm custom saying. Custom visors. No, I, a lot. A lot of people are getting deals now that before. I hear you. Like, a lot of first timers in the past, Kevin, like Kevin Hart three got, years. got a shoe. I know, I understand. Yeah, I just, but I'm not trying to take anything away from him. I'm just a little like, nope. all right, guys, like uh, we're just gonna, get, everyone's gonna get a deal. Does that mean my podcast can have a deal? Can me, Lawrence, our, and ex- Luke have our own? Exactly. Deal? Say can nice things. <laughs> Hire us, Nike. Mm-hmm. Okay. You no, know, Rogan getting a hundred mil at fucking Spotify. That's crazy too. We're we're over here doing the Lord's work. Exactly. Telling the people about <laughs> sneaker releases. Where's our money? <laughs> um, but yeah, you go into the Doja Cat thing. Okay. So apparently people, people are real bored on the internet and they started digging around and they found a video of Doja Cat on uh, not Omegle, but like the other like video chatting website. And she was with like a bunch of white people. And she was saying slurs and shit. And mm-hmm. apparently one of her songs is super racist. And uh, yeah, I didn't do nothing in yeah. terms of with the Sandra Bland stuff. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I don't even know when this, when this happened. Was this years ago? Isn't she half black? She is. Yes, her, still... her father is uh, estranged from her life and her mother is Jewish, if I'm correct. He's like African, and her mother's like Jewish or some shit like that. Yeah, I heard okay. she's half Jewish, half South African. So, mm-hmm. I yeah, I, I know. Why are people mad? Well, basically, she got on a like one of those four chan type things with like the incel, the racist incel dudes. Yeah, yeah, and she was blasting ends, right? She was well, yeah, she was doing that. You know, she some of the vi- like there was videos where. You know, I, she was using the N word. You know, she was dealing with guys who uh, they were taught like they were. She was doing things that made pe- made people think like maybe she's on some type of drugs or she's like, you know, oh. she's drunk like multiple personalities type of shit. It was, uh, you know, mm-hmm. just a lot of you know, it was a lot of stuff that that uh, it, it's it, to me it's deeper than just some half white half black girl. You know, saying it's like self hate, but then it's also it also brings up the topic of like your celebrities, like, you know, don't hold them. Don't make them seem like they're great. They're regular people to do dumb fucking shit. If that makes yeah. sense. And, and I feel like sometimes in this celebrity culture, we, we make people bigger than what they are. She's a fucking self hating chick. Like she yeah. hates her, her black side. Like that's it. You know, I think, you know, the fact that when you see a girl like Doja Cat, who is making, money and off of her 
body, not, and when I say making money off her body, her her features that are like you know, that are black, like her. Yeah, yeah, you we know, feel you. Butt, no, her, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when you're and when you're playing that angle, and you know, and you're making this music, and you you know that part of you is like you're you're getting that, but then on the same on the same token, it's like you hate black culture, you hate black people, you don't like black people. For you to make a song about a young lady that was murdered uh, by police, you know, mm -hmm. for just her, you know, for her speaking out and um, and Sandra Bland and being murdered in a cell and for you to make a song called Did, Didn't Do Nothing or just, you know, stuff like that. And it's like when you're doing that for white people to laugh, there's, yeah. a, some, there's a huge problem there that, you know, that, uh, and you know, once again, I'm not saying she should be canceled, but I definitely feel like you know, it. it there's something that that it's deeper than you know. It's pretty deep. Oh, for sure, for sure. I so, will add a little bit further to that. Is that we shouldn't maybe we shouldn't cancel her for this, but she did say a couple months ago, if Say So makes number one on the top Billboard 100, she said she was going to show titties, and then she mm -hmm. said she she then she told everybody, I'm not showing titties. <laughs> And that is a that is an, a a crime. That's a crime. That's cancel the woman for that. Cancel. It, don't cancel her for past actions. Look at her current actions. Her current Look, actions yeah. are she's a fucking liar. She's not showing titties. <laughs> well, I just hope this young lady gets um. The, she needs help. The, the the help she needs. Yeah. Um. And Luke, I hope you get the nude that you so desperately want. <laughs> she said titties. There no titties. Wait, does she have an OnlyFans? No, of course not. She's a, oh no, she's a famous celebrity. Luke, I got no shot. Do? <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna wait for wait for this shit to blow up. Mm -hmm. Maybe she'll start spiraling. Then she'll get an OnlyFans. Then I'll get my titties. Um, uh, yeah, um, I feel like I, I definitely feel like yeah. You you know I, I feel like if if you are you have black features, you're you know you it's not like you know you're. Your dad, even though you know you, you probably you definitely probably have you know abandonment issues with her dad because her dad, like I said, he's he's uh he was in like a, he was in Whoopi Goldberg's movie. He was in a movie with Whoopi Goldberg. Like she know you know it, he she he she has that, and and I think the fact that you're like basically tap dancing for these white guys mm -hmm. in, in this sense, but you're you're capitalizing and making money and and music for black people. It it, it rubs you know it's definitely not you know yeah mm -hmm. it's true yeah yeah it's it's pretty damning and i thought it was like a while ago like maybe when she was like younger younger like in like in her teens or something but no it was like 2015 2016 something like that mm -hmm. so it's like i don't you know four three you know three four years ago she she could have changed since then she's got money now she might have gone seen a therapist like she could be a different person but it, it's you know who knows Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she didn't show titties. We need some Doja titty, you know. Doja titties. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, guys, what do you think about final thoughts here? Uh, just to sort of um, one thing that we talked about before the mic was that uh, Kanye's coming out with a new music apparently. Mm -hmm. Um, that might have been leaked info, so I'm very excited for that. Mm -hmm. Um, and other than that, man, I'm just getting through this. Let's see. Getting through. It. <laughs> what do you guys? Did you guys listen to the new Future album? I didn't get a chance. I Lawrence, did. did you listen to it? Did you like it? I like uh, I like some a lot of the majority of it. Yeah, I think uh, the Travis you know, Scott song was a little disappointing. I loved that. his Twitter fucking rant. Whatever the fuck that was, that was great. That what was super Twitter entertaining. Rant? Oh, dude, he was saying like, "Yo, fuck ugly girls." Like, yo, this shit was crazy. Oh my god! I, also, I think he, he said, "I think he was talking about their personality, but like the way it reads is like super meme esque in the way that we portray future." He nice. was like, yo, fuck ugly girls. Y'all making shit up. Like, don't leave the pretty girls alone. You're like, what the fuck is this dude doing? That was great. I haven't got a chance to listen to the album, though. That's definitely on my to-do list. It's Yeah, it's solid. It, it didn't really blow me away. But I think, yeah, I think that the Travis Scott song, I was a little, it was a little lacking for me. But besides that. Roddy, Roddy Stryker is, is great. I love Roddy Stryker. Yes. That's a nice. great song. Yes, yes, yes. Is there any other uh, new, new music coming out? I don't people know. people that we care about? Gonna gonna drop the album, but you know, it's gonna if you like gonna. Oh, you uh, know what? I should plug um Frank the Butcher, friend of the show. He came out with an instrumental album that's on Spotify. 
Yeah. And it's definitely one of those like uh, get high, vibe out, just chill, which is perfect for this quarantine night. You know, if you're mm-hmm. not going out, you just want to chill. Definitely ch- check that out. It's on it's on all platforms. Um, I think that's it, right? I think that's it. Mm-hmm. Support tenant. Support Jesse. Yeah. Good luck, guys. Support, yep. Support us. We are on Discord. Uh, you could join us, hang out. It's getting real active. Love that mm-hmm. um, people chatting like right when I wake up. It's great. Yeah. Um, buy some merch from Becky. Remember to be happy. dot com. Go to uh, the sub page. We got some great shit on there. Um, at LZD three two five at Trevisus at Not That Genie at Sub Podcast NYC. There on the Instagram, you can find an email and a phone number. Leave us a voicemail, text us, or send us an email. And um, yeah, two weeks from now, basically, I think we what June thirteenth is that what we said? Yeah, June well, yeah, well, yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, I mean, more details to come, but we're gonna have like a live Zoom esque thing where we're gonna do part of the show, a little Q and A, and some stand up. Maybe we're trying to figure out the details, but we got that coming up. So put that in your calendars for that Saturday yes. night. There you go. And uh, everyone, just be well, stay safe, six feet, mask, all that. You know. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Don't go well, out on the luck. beach. It's a trap, man. Don't go to the don't go to the beach this week. You <clears> know? Enjoy your Memorial Day. Uh good luck on Tuesday, guys. <laughs> yeah, Tuesday. Join the Discord yeah. and update us what happens on Tuesday. Cause that's yeah. this is the biggest W that's gonna be around for a while. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um peace guys and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, right, y'all. Peace.